welcome folks to another Game Hoarder production. Very delighted to bring to you another Tex Murphy adventure. Because let's face it, Tex Murphy adventures are kind of kick ass. Let's start a new game. Well, let's watch the intro. Actually, hang on. Let's make sure we have subtitles enabled. That captioning. Gotta have that captioning. Alright, they're going to play the intro anyways. Hey, ya baby. There must be some heavy ass sleepers. See, that was a copy of Under a Killing Moon he threw out. Still sleeping. She's been drinking. She's been murdered.
Cherry Hill. You know, I'm turning 30 tomorrow. Did you know that? Well, happy birthday. You know, I was just thinking you don't look a day over 25. Liar. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've just been feeling very stuck lately. Uh, you know, I cannot remember the last time I was surprised by anything. Can you? The last time I was surprised was by you. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, I'm just surprised that we're able to stay good friends. I've been thinking about moving. Maybe Phoenix. I've got an old college friend that lives down there, and she says it's nice. I think the change would do me good. What do you think? Yeah, I think you'll love it down there, because they're square dancing and ten-gallon hats and armadillo hunting. And macho yokels with names like Tex. So tell me, what do you think? You think I should go or not? Well, you know, Arizona may seem like a much more exciting place than San Francisco, but it's dangerous down there. At least around here, you got your friends checking out for you. It's dangerous everywhere. I mean, especially here. I mean, did you hear about that co-ed? Someone murdered her in her own bedroom. I didn't hear about that. Who killed her? Well, the newspaper said it might be a serial killer. They gave him some kind of crazy name. I don't know. I, I can't remember what they called him. Well, doesn't that stuff scare you? I mean, I'm a tough guy, and it scares me. I appreciate your concern, Tex, but I have been fine on my own for a long time. Looks like the rain's letting up. I'm going home. Got a big date? Oh, yeah. Cary Grant and a pint of hockey dust. Hold me down. See you later. What, no invite? What a schmuck. What? Chelsea was giving you opportunities all evening and you blew every one of them. The son P.I. you are. Well, you wouldn't know a clue if it walked up and punched you in the face. Listen, all I know is, every time I try and ask her out, she turns me down. It's from the distinguished gentleman in the corner. Bought you a bourbon. I don't know that guy's name, but I know he's been in a shitload of movies. Probably before I was born. Oh, good evening, good evening. Gordon Fitzpatrick is my name. Please sit down, sir. You know, I am not in the habit of eavesdropping, but I do believe I heard someone say that you were a private detective. That's right. I'm a licensed private investigator. Oh, Juddle Knightful. It's a pleasure indeed to meet you. And your name? Murphy. Tex Murphy. Tex Murphy. Well... Well, 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 this is fine. Now, listen, let me ask you this, Mr. Tex Murphy. Have you in your work ever had the occasion to seek for a missing person? Sure. I can do that. Well, then perhaps we could do some business. Well, I think we can work something out. My office is just around the corner, the Ritz Hotel. Why don't we go there? I like your office. Oh, yes, the ambiance is very authentic. Reminds me of those, uh, you know, those old detective stories that I used to watch when I was a kid. I'm sure that at any moment, 
Sam Spade is going to come marching through that door, but then who needs Sam Spade when I've got Tex Murphy standing in front of me? Did you always want to be a private eye? As far back as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Would you have a seat, Mr. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, while all the other kids were logged on to Sesame Street Interactive, I was reading Hammett and Chandler. It must be quite an exciting life. Oh, it's got its moments. Don't get me wrong, it's not like the movies. It sure as hell doesn't pay very well. But it suits me. So what can I do for you, Mr. Fitzpatrick? Well, I'm trying to find an old acquaintance of mine, Thomas Malloy, Dr. Thomas Malloy. The last official address for him that I have is the Ritz Hotel. Now, do you happen to know him? I can't say that I do. Well, it's very important that I find him. You know, let me give you a little background. For many years, I was a research scientist and I worked alongside Dr. Malloy. But about 20 years ago, maybe, I guess something like that, our paths diverged and I lost touch with him, he with me. And then very recently, I saw a photograph of him in a local newspaper. Now, it's a strange thing how time is such a natural equalizer, makes us appreciate the faces from one's past. At any rate, the older gentleman in that photograph is Dr. Malloy. And I contacted the newspaper to find out where the photograph had been taken. It was at the San Francisco Technical University. Well, I hiked right out there, got to the campus, and decided to look the man up and surprise him. Even with that photograph, no one recognized him. No one knew his name. But then I received a strange phone call by a young woman named Sandra. The man I knew as Thomas Malloy, she knew as Tyson Matthews. She seemed quite uncomfortable talking on the vid phone, so I suggested we meet. She never showed up for that appointment. And you never heard from her again? You know, it's strange. But this simple, whimsical wish of mine to get together with my old friend has materialized into, I don't know, I feel a sense of impending doom I fear for the young woman, and I fear for my friend, Dr. Malloy. It sounds interesting. I think I can look into this for you. Thank you. Now, you'll have to refresh my memory. How much, how much is your fee? How does it work? I charge $500 a day. Of course. Plus expenses. Naturally. There, that should be enough to get you started. And here, here somewhere, there you go. I could be reached at that number. I'll be in touch. I feel we're off to a good start. Not uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Five hundred dollars a day? This is the first cash I've had in months. Four grand. I owe Louie two hundred bucks, and Rook says I owe him three hundred. But there should be plenty left over. Yes, sir. Things are definitely looking up. <laughs> and some CD2. What the shit? Now, so you know, I am playing this off my original disc. Uh, so, I'll see if I can copy them all on the hard drive and get them to read from one drive letter so we can avoid this, but... These are my original CDs, all six of them. If it's only a CD swap and I can't remember if it's every day, then that's not that bad. We'll see how annoying it gets. I kind of like the authenticity of the please insert the next disc message. But, again, 
Been quite a while since I played these. didn't give me much to go on. Just the newspaper photo of Malloy and the fact that Malloy stayed here at the Ritz. And there's that girl Fitzpatrick referred to, Sandra. Maybe I can track her down. First I need to find out which apartment Malloy was staying in and then get into it. That means I gotta deal with Nilo, my landlord. It's the second week of April and I'm a little late on my February rent payment. That's all right, baby. We got faux G's. All right, good old movement mode. And it moved just as quirky as the first one did. My parents found this in the attic and sent it to me. I remember the pastoral days of my early youth riding on my trusty Mount Striper chasing bank robbers and horse thieves. And all that came to an end one summer afternoon during an electrical storm. The lightning struck a transformer near our home creating a tremendous power surge. <laughs> it was after the accident that my brothers and sisters started calling me Tex. Whenever I asked them, they'd just laugh and wink at each other. I never did find out about that nickname. He put a hole in the roof, shaped like Texas. This door leads downstairs. This door connects to my rec room. The rec room. That's where he does his heavy lifting. article about Mac Malden out of the newspaper. <laughs> Gives me a good chuckle. I cut this thing out of the paper a few days ago. I've known Mac Malden for years. We've worked together on several cases, but I don't know if we're actually friends. We just help each other out occasionally. Chosen Policeman of the Month. Most of these computer components were purchased at a yard sale. The only one I've been able to get running is the little laptop on the shelf in front of the chair. Most of these computer Most of This photo was taken at the last family reunion I attended. Has it really been 18 years? That's the only computer in the office that works. CD not found. This door leads back. That's the way back to my office. The 
Between my wedding ring and this picture of my ex-wife, Sylvia, I will never, ever forget that women are alien creatures capable of great destruction. This picture was taken of my ex-wife on her 25th birthday. Yeah, she was gorgeous. Makes me wonder sometimes why we couldn't make it work. I really need to find some stuff to put in here. I really need... Nothing interesting here. I really need... I really need... Another bill from the electronic show. I can't believe they expect me to pay for the junk they sell. This notice is to inform you that this account is delinquent and must be paid immediately. Payments not received within three hours of this notice. It will be sent to the Body Part Collection Agency for immediate action. Oh, great. $1,230. Nothing interesting here. Eat the rich dog food. A little gamey, but not bad for the price. I've had this jackknife ever since my Weeblows days. The guy who sold me this said it just might be an unsigned Picasso. It better be, because I paid 30 bucks. A couple more cases and I'll have this thing paid for. Then I'll start paying off my student loans. It took me forever to get this diploma. I had to send in a hundred proofs of purchase from True Detective. <laughs> The 60-day warranty just ran out on my electronic shop fax machine. Should break down any minute now. This is a breathtaking view of Saturn from the imaginary planet Alpha 19. This alien landscape reminds me of the old Star Trek episode where they get that distress call, then Captain Kirk meets that beautiful woman, then he and Spock barely escape, then Kirk makes that funny joke right at the end. Uh, isn't that every episode? This painting always reminds me of something. I'm not sure what. I got this from my grandpa, Audie Murphy was signed by Richie Havens. Grandpa said he was the original singing detective. I haven't played my phonograph since it destroyed the A-side on my Bill Shatner Sings the Blues LP. I'm very choosy about what I keep in my hutch. The current selection shows off my sensitive, artistic side. This hot plate will come in handy if I eat anything other than saltines and dog food again. Ah, Taco Bob. Got the most stylish placemats in town. Chandler Avenue recently got a city-funded cleanup. Now the street's darn near clean enough to eat off.
Well, there's different dialogue options, uh, uh, actions that this you can take throughout this game. Door. It leads to the fire escape. You can be nice text, neutral text, or dick text. Guess which one I'm gonna be. I should probably stop by the newsstand and see if Chelsea's upset with me about last night. I've been trying to get her to go out with me for years now, and just when I think I might be getting somewhere, I stick my big foot in my mouth. Well, now I got some money, and maybe she'll give me another chance to let me take her out to dinner. Sorry, Tex, not gonna let that happen. Hi, Tex. So, you got any new magazines, eh? You know, I've got a magazine I think you'd really like. It's called Butthead Detective. Come on, Chelsea. I'm just trying to lighten your mood a little. There are worse things than turning 30. Well, maybe it wasn't hard for you to turn 30. Or maybe it was so long ago you can't remember. Oof, that hurt. Look, Tex, I'm sorry. I I'm just not feeling very friendly today. Is there something I can do for you? Well, I got a bunch of cash, but I got nothing to do with it. I figured I'd go out to dinner tonight, but I hate to eat alone. Are you interested? What, like a date? No, it'd be more like two friends having a great meal and maybe some stimulating conversation. I guess that'd be okay. I mean, yeah, that'd, that'd be all right. You know, Tex, I haven't really been myself lately, and I really appreciate you looking out for me. Where should we go? How about Burger Barn? They got great atmosphere at half the price. I've got a better idea. Why don't you let me make you dinner at my place? It's cheaper than going out. And uh, besides, I have uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Let's say, uh, 8 o'clock? Well, you talked me into it, Miss Parabell. Well, I feel so spoiled. By the way, what should I bring, red or white? You better bring both. Nice! Fine. After years of relentless pursuit, Chelsea's inviting me over to her apartment for dinner. Oh man, the possibilities are making me woozy. Okay, snap out of it, Murphy, and let's get back to work here. Maybe I should head over to the Ritz and see if Nilo's at the front desk. I'm sure he'll be happy to see me. Hold it right there, you sneaking piece of slop. You know, I think I might just grab that cigar and shove it down your throat. What do you think about that? <laughs> One more crack like that, and you can go look for another dump to live in. Pay up your rent, or you're out of here. Capiche? Fuck this guy. That's more like it.
now that we're all square, can you take a look at a photo for me? No comprendi. I said I can use your help. I heard what you said. It's just my meter ran out. It'll cost you a C note. You dirty bastard. So, what's on your mind? Recognize the man in this photo? Yeah, I've seen him before. What can you tell me about him? He used to stay here. I'm gone now. Which room did he stay in? A. What name did he use when he signed in? Matthews. Tyson Matthews. Okay. Well, thanks for the help. Oh, the pleasure was all mine. Pea bread. Apartment A is through the door by Nilo's desk and up the stairs. Nilo's had a hard time keeping tenants, so Malloy was probably the last person to stay in the room. Hopefully I'll find a lead once I get inside. Alright folks, wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for more Tex Murphy and the Pandora Directive.